Hello, we are going to continue looking at SQL. Now, actually continuing with SQL, select a particular query within SQL, looking at how you apply it to two tables. And actually this idea extends across more than two tables, but I'm only gonna show two tables in this video with two examples. So just a quick recollection, because it is important for this concept. There are two really important terms in database theory. You've got primary keys and you've got foreign keys. Both are fields, both are columns in tables, but they are a little bit different. A primary key uniquely identifies a record. It must be unique for every row in your table. Often something like ID, but not always. A foreign key is in another table and actually is a primary key of another table. So a foreign key is not unique, but in another table is unique. And that's how tables connect in a relational database. And if you want to therefore use SQL select to get data from two related tables, you need to match up the foreign key to a primary key using the where clause in SQL select. So that's really what I'm gonna show you, how you use where to join up the tables. There is another operation called inner join in SQL, which I'm not gonna teach because personally I think select is simpler. And these are the four clauses, same idea as last video, just now is the extension of a second table. If you're a bit confused about primary keys, foreign keys, please go back to my database video that'll be linked in the description as well as the previous SQL video. So let's look at a example. I've got two tables here. One you might have seen before, which is albums. I've also got a table called songs and they're connected via a foreign key. So looking at it here, I wonder if you can decide what is our primary key and what is our foreign key. There should be two primary keys and one foreign key. Well, in albums, our primary key is ID. In fact, all of the fields here are unique, but if this was a proper database, say for Spotify or Apple Music, you would not have uh, no repeats in those fields, so ID is most sensible. And in songs, you might be drawn to listing because often the far left field is your primary key, but not always. Actually here, the most sensible one is ref, maybe short for reference, that could be hexadecimal, say, for every song. And it's really the song ID, not the album ID. But look, we've also got a, a field called ID. That is our foreign key. That connects up the two tables. So really, you're looking for what field in one table is in another table. The names aren't always the same. If they're different, you'll get told one is a foreign key. Anyway, for this example, I want to find out what are the song names stored, how many streams did they have, and what album are they in? So looking for three fields, basically, the name, stream count, and album title is what I'm looking for here. So I'm looking for data across two tables, and so therefore I've got to be a little bit cleverer about how I use select. And what I would do is something like this. Starting with my first clause, which is quite simple, just selecting the fields, which like I say, are name, stream count, and title. From now, I've got to list two tables. So I add a comma, like I would with my fields. My two tables are called albums and songs. But for where clause is where things get a little bit different. I've got where albums.id equals songs.id. Now, in terms of this notation with a dot, this is where you've got two fields with the same name in two different tables. If I just said where ID, it would know which ID I'm referring to. So you've got to put the table name, then a dot, then the field name, if you've got duplicate names across tables. So if you see a dot, that just is helping you know what table to look in. So the ID in albums equals the ID in songs is what we're matching. Now this would return this table. What it will give us is the names of our songs in songs. Uh, the stream count of those songs, but also the title of the album it belongs to. Now here, for example, we've got two songs from Adele's album, 25, and so it matches both of those in our resulting table. Likewise, there are two songs from Taylor Swift's album, and so we get those in the table. It's a good example of where we have efficiency created through a relational database. But anyway, crucially, 
we've got a couple of albums not mentioned in this table. We haven't got Mumford and Sons, we haven't got John Baptiste because they're not listed in songs for whatever reason. Their ID doesn't show up in this table and so therefore it doesn't show up in our query result. Now what it's doing is it's working its way through the songs table and looking up this ID. It's matching the ID in albums to the ID in songs. So starting with the suburbs, it goes to ID being four. Well, songs.id is four. So it goes through the albums table until it finds four. And so therefore it can connect the song called the suburbs with the album called the suburbs. It does the same with our other songs as well. Now, I think that's confusing initially. I think what can help is seeing what would happen if you didn't do that. So let me show you what would happen if you didn't include the where clause, if you just had the select and from bit. Well, you'd get a bit of a nightmare table like this. And you can't see all of it because it's so big. What is happening here is, like I mentioned, it's going through each record in songs initially because I've got name as my first field listed. And to be honest, name and stream count work fine. You know, the suburbs has got 123 million streams. But what's not working fine is the title field because it doesn't know what song belongs to what album. Without that information about the foreign key, it can't connect it up. So you can see Folklore is our first album in albums, then We Are, then 25. It's working its way through and just matching any record to our song is not what I want. I'm getting duplicate data and it is incorrect. So that's simple where albums.id equals songs.id is important. Let's look at another example with a tiny bit more complexity. And you know, you can just learn you've got to do this, but I'd obviously rather you understand it. So going back to, not going back to, uh, including examples I've shown before, we've got teachers and we've got classes as two separate tables. Primary key in teachers is teacher code and uh, name is our primary key in classes. Teacher code is our foreign key in classes. Not always at the end, I just happen to have it there in my examples. And if my query is, or my question is, who is the teacher and what room are 12B IT in? What I'm looking for is the name of the teacher. I'm looking for the room of the class, but I'm filtering based on 12B IT. So my SQL query will look something like this. Select teachers.name comma room. First of all, I'm looking for the name of the teacher, then I'm looking for the room. Now room is quite straightforward in my query, but I've got teachers.name. Again, this is when you've got a duplicate field across multiple tables. The name in teachers is different to the name in classes, and so I've got to specify which one I mean. That's why I'm going teachers.name and not just name, otherwise I wouldn't know. Whereas room is on its own, I haven't got any duplicate rooms, I've only got one room field and one table, so I can leave that without that prefix. From a straightforward, just my two table names, teachers and classes, and again I've got my where clause where I have my primary key equaling my foreign key. So teachers.teacherCode is from my teacher table, and classes.teacherCode is from my classes table. I'm matching up the two, so we only get the correct data. The difference this time is I've got another part to my where clause, I've got and. So boolean and, both sides have got to be true. So I'm also looking for classes.name to be 12bit. I'm only interested when it is 12bit. So you've got to have that part of your where clause. To do further filtering after it, simply add boolean and, and you can have a few boolean ands if you need to. Now here we've only got one class called 12BIT because it's a primary key and we get Mr. Brown correctly and F13 correctly. Again, if I omitted that really important bit, teachers.teacherCode equals classes.teacherCode, it's not going to be able to match up our records properly. So make sure when you are searching across more than one table, you match the foreign key to the primary key. And the order isn't important, you could switch these around and do the foreign key first, then the primary key. That's not super important. Now, if I did leave this off, 
Again, it wouldn't give me the correct result. If I only filtered based on 12BIT, it can't narrow down the search in the teacher's table. I get all four teachers with the correct room. It doesn't make sense because it can't match up the two tables. So that is important. So if you are taking anything away, please take away the fact that you need to have your first table dot the primary key equals the second table dot the foreign key. And generally those two names will be the same. That enables you to connect up the two tables.